Hello, everyone. It's time to eat, drink, and be merry with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy. Five star chef Ivan Flowers is back on Big Blend Radio's Eat, Drink, and Be Merry show today to share how to make Zinfandel Steakhouse mushrooms. Mm. Nancy, I know, right? We're looking yeah. at this. Um, I want to, I just want to make a whole bunch of these mushrooms and just sit with a big bowl and eat them for some reason. It just looks <laughs> so wanna, good. I want to play with them with different, I your <laughs> no, like, with different flavors. Yeah. Because they soak up everything. I know. You know, it, it, and, there you go. There you go. Yeah. And it, it's like you could just have a mushroom bar. I that know. sounds good. Oh, right? good. Yes. Like different, <laughs> different wines and stuff. Uh, well, Chef Ivan is here, as you can hear. Um, and uh, his recipes are always featured in Big Blend Radio and TV magazine. You can go to blendradioandtv.com and see his recipe for the mushrooms, um, but also uh, see all his other recipes and interviews with us. Just look in our expert department. Uh, he's also on Facebook and Twitter at Chef Ivan Flowers. And uh, he's got a great YouTube series that you should check out. Just type in Chef Ivan Flowers on YouTube. And also he teaches in Temecula Valley High School. And, you know, it's been interesting over the years. We followed Ivan's career, well, part, part of his career, because he's got a long career and uh, quite an established career. I mean, five-star chef, uh, working in hotels, resorts, uh, restaurants, owning a restaurant, you know, all kinds of – he's been on every avenue – and now he's in the world of teaching. But somehow, Chef Ivan, welcome back, by the way. Um, I don't Thank think you. Took Zinf- Thank you, didn't took, you didn't take the Zinfandel to the school, right? I know it's in no. the you No. Know. <laughs> yes, yes. Temecula Valley has beautiful wine country. No wine uh, in the school. And certainly you could do it with a, uh alcohol-free wine or uh, reduced grape juice. You know, it's the okay. technique. So a lot of ingredients apply. Um, you know, Temecula Valley High School has one of the most phenomenal, phenomenal kitchens I've ever seen in my career in any kitchen mm. or hotel. Um, wow. They built a kitchen that is just staggering and beautiful and state of the art. Um, you know, as you know, I live in Imperial Beach, so it takes me, you know, I do a 140 mile round trip to be able to teach. Um, in that kitchen, uh, I adore the students. We have um, our principal is Alan, Alan Williams, along with um, also with CTE chair is Kim Randall. And what's nice is they care. The program is CTE, and they care truly, have passion and care about kids and their success. So with all of those components, it's well worth the trip. Um, oh. because I'm in, I'm in a place of, it's an environment that's going to change lives. And, and to me, that's important. Towards the end of my career now, I want to give back. I've always ran teaching kitchens when I was in the industry. Um, and now to, you know, and you know, when you teach culinary, it's the world, mm. you know, food is the world, everything, nutrition and, and just everything involved in it and traveling oh. and cultures. It is the world. So it's an amazing opportunity. You know, I, I was just listening to an interview on NPR the other day, and it was they were talking because you know back to school and all that was going on, and they were interviewing uh, students, teachers, and parents. People just calling in, hey, I want to know this from kids. How do they feel about this? I want to know this from teachers. And um, at the point that I came in on the interview, I was driving, and I need to go and find it and listen to the whole thing. They had different students from around the country, and, and one of the questions they put to these kids, I mean, one was a farmer in Minnesota, one was, I think, back in Pennsylvania, and there were, like, different, you know, places across the country, and they all agreed on this. They said they're not getting the instruction for vocational skills. They're not getting instruction on finance, and some of the basics that they they don't even they have a hard time understanding how to fill out a scholarship application form, going for financial aid. You know, so this is the thing when I think about what you're doing in Temecula, uh, at at Temecula Valley High School, to me, and and it's such a, you know, that's such a blossoming area, not only with the wine, but we watched, I remember when there was like, you know, a couple, you know, asphalt roads, there was the old town, and then, you know, the rest is wine country and some dirt roads, and now there's like, you know. They don't leave out the horses. Horses, (laughs) massive community that's grown and lived, lived there off of, you know, Interstate 15, but. 
on farming, so much farming and organic farming and good stuff yes. happening there. Yes. Um, very family focused region. But I right. think about like the fact that they're learning cooking. This is something whether or not they're going to be a chef, whether they may help them as a nutritionist or, but the reality is there's some basic skills in life and sometimes kids don't get those skills. And I think this is a well, very cool way of teaching them something that yes. they can grasp and, and move forward yes. with. And that's what we do. I mean, it's not only cooking, it's nutrition, it's mathematics, it's interviewing skills, it's how to dress, how to speak, how to write, how to interview. We cover it all. We go into it all, which is wow. what makes it such a wonderful class because it's not just here's a recipe and that's it. It's how are you going to, number one, be happy in the world and successful at what you want. And even if they don't go into the culinary, hospitality, or tourism field, there are ways and skills that they basically learn that is going to help them in any endeavor that they do. One of the biggest things is confidence. One of the biggest, biggest things is loving yourself and, and, and investing in yourself and not having the fear to try something. Or, or it's okay if you haven't figured it out yet. I mean, their toes are hardly in, in, in the pond of life yet. So it's a very supportive, nurturing classroom, and it's a very uh, supportive environment. And it's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why I'm very happy at the school, because it's, um, it's one hell of a school, I'll tell you. And he's playing in that big kitchen. He's got like the, you know, yes. <laughs> he's got the kitchen, he's got the kids. Yes. And, you know, yes. and I think it's, I love that face. You know, Nancy and I just, we were talking about this with an interview with Bobby DePorter of Super Camp. And, uh, we were we always have our youth success shows, and we were talking about we just watched this band in Yuma, Arizona. He has play in the Yuma Landing Bar and Grill in a bar and grill, but you know family parents have to be there, guardians have to be there, and it was all parents. You know, it was everybody that wanted to see these kids. They were all in high school, um, and all these different groups. And you watch them, and this fear of being out in the public, and then in a setting. And this Jam University, which mm -hmm. everyone will get them on the show because I keep talking about them over and over again. But these kids get to play the music that they listen to, that they love. But watching them work in team in a band, and I think a band, I know that musicians and, and uh, chefs and, and the culinary world are hand in hand, they, <laughs> not only in the hours and having to serve or perform, right? But there's that unity that has to happen in a kitchen and the same thing in a band. And watching them do harmonies and then, oh, now you're going to take the solo. Now you're going to do this part and watch them overcome those fears and then walk off the stage when everyone's clapping. And you watch them get over their mistakes, too, which is really important. Mm -hmm. But right, that right. face, that face of like, I Absolutely. did something. Yeah. Do you see that in the kitchen? Like, right. it, like it is like a band, huh? <laughs> well, I've always I've always said, you know, when you're teaching, whether you're in the kitchen, you're in the um industry you watch somebody where they start to get it and you smile yeah. mm -hmm. and then you see them again where they see themselves starting to get it so they're going through the motions in the beginning they're picking up that foundation and then all of a sudden there's a shift and you see in their eyes i can do this and i can do more and i'm not afraid to progress i'm getting the basics i'm getting the techniques i have the confidence and once you start to see that, what I did in the industry is I trained many sea chefs, many chefs. And once they started to get it and they felt comfortable, I said, now I want to put you, you have to get in touch with your own imagination and your own heart. And what is your food? How do you see this? How are you going to paint this plate, this canvas? What are you going to do? That's very important. A lot of chefs in the industry are like, it's my way or the highway. Yep. That's nonsense. Mm -hmm. In school, I have... Students from all backgrounds, you know, Asian, American, Indian, um, you know, French, um, from different parts. They teach me as well. Hey, my grandmother does this certain recipe. Let's let's look at it. Well, you know, so it's it's a two way street, um, and that's truly what culinary should be. That's cool. I, I mean, like that. I like heritage cooking. Like I know. You know, my granny had lots of different things that she did in the kitchen, including what's this? Oh, the where the cooker, the lid of the thing hit the ceiling, and carrots went everywhere. It was cool, man. <laughs> yeah. Pressure cooker. Yeah. And she's like, the pressure cookers, yeah. 
yeah, yeah. And the little steamy coming out. Next thing, it, it was like a flying saucer. That's, 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 went, Dude, I like cooking it's a, with Granny. It's a, it's a new, no, no. Yeah. Her, she was Nana. And we call her Nana, and she's still around in our hearts, you know. And uh, yeah. But I think I would love to see a cooking show with Cooking with Nana. Yeah, because... because Things happen in that kitchen, but she always had her little beer at the end of the day. She was the near coolest beer. near beer. Not real beer, near yeah, beer. She had yeah. a taste for beer, but um, yep. But grandma, that that's a big deal for you, Ivan, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my grandma God. Heard? I mean, I was, yeah, I was a young kid, and she's taking me to the butcher. She's taking me to the live chicken market. She's taking me to the a fresh live bread. chicken market. Oh my. God. Yeah, we used to where they they had the chickens live, and they do the chickens for you, and then the bread. And then she would go to the bakeries and then she'd go to the fruit stands and we'd come back with bags in this tiny little apartment on Flappish Avenue and she'd start to cook. And she had the waterless pots back then that you don't see anymore with the heavy lids and the whole third floor would smell. And my grand, and then, you know, as, as she's eating, she's making appetizers. So she's chopped, doing chopped chicken livers with shallots and onion. And she's putting them on fresh Italian bread with a piece of cheese. You know, she's doing um, olives and peppers, and she's making salads, and I mean, it was amazing. So I was, that was it. I was destined. Oh, man. I love that. And I, 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 kids really do learn from their family. So let's, let's, we're going to, we're going to get you on our family history and our youth success shows. Uh, we've we've got to do that with you, Ivan. Um, but now we're going to talk about Zinfandel Steakhouse Mushrooms. Yes. So yes. this makes it, because this is part of our global food feature. Um, so is it the Zinfandel that makes this a French recipe or is it the technique that makes it a French recipe? It, it's the Zinfandel and the technique. Okay. The saute, what we're doing with the garlic. You know, mushrooms get a bad rap. I just spoke to the students, as a matter of fact, on Friday. Who likes mushrooms? Raise your hand. Three quarters of them were afraid of them. I said, okay, did you ever eat a raw mushroom? Yes. What is a mushroom? It's a fungus. So it tastes like nothing. Uh-huh. All right? You're eating nothing. It's a sponge. There's nothing alive in it, really. It's just spongy. In, in the period of antiquity, the Greeks called it the food of the gods. Because mm-hmm. what happens is when you put heat to them, as you would to any other product, it changes. The mushrooms completely change. Something happens. So a lot of them are like, oh, I don't like the texture. Well, when you caramelize mushroom, and depending on what mushroom it is, the texture changes. Mm-hmm. There's ways to cook mushrooms where you can't salt them in the beginning, because if you do, they'll leach out liquid. So you have to salt them at the end. I have converted so many people in my life to eating different mushrooms cooked different ways, and they said, I never knew. You know? They just never knew the technique. They are an amazing, amazing food source. I love them. I love mushrooms. I I don't know if a day goes by of us not eating mushrooms. I mean, at least five days a week there's mushrooms going on. Mushrooms and yeah. garlic. I think, you know, everybody talks about those three ingredients mm-hmm. in your life. I think mm-hmm. it's chili, garlic, and mushrooms. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that has to be there in, in, the, in the fridge, in the pantry. We always have to have mushrooms. Yes. And yes. Um, as a kid, you know, as a kid, I thought that wine was disgusting. I thought coffee was disgusting. And I thought mushrooms, especially raw mushrooms, do not yeah. put the, the raw mushrooms in salads. I'd be like, why? Yeah. It looks dirty. I don't know. Yeah. It's weird. And there was no, I didn't understand. I, I actually really don't understand raw mushrooms. Why no. do people know? It's not Because they don't know. You know, we've talked about this. Remember, they took them on the pizzas and they really don't cook. Or they're in a salad, they, they, they chop it up. You might as well take a piece of cardboard or take mm. your sponge that you're cleaning the sink with, cut it into pieces and throw that in the salad. There's, a, a mushroom raw, it's a disservice. It really is. Um, mm. It needs some kind of heat. It needs a little bit of TLC. Mm. Well, our pizza making, you know, which, which is flatbread, we just take pita bread or non bread. And now I've learned you cook the mushrooms and the onions and the garlic. Not yes. too much. You know, but mm-hmm. now I just realized now why I've got all the watery stuff now. Do not play, you know. Yeah. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got another tip here. But, you know, but cooking them beforehand, which is, you know, you stop me from just putting them on there and wondering why everything became soggy and the, you know. So yeah. and now I've also learned do not use the big piece of non bread. There's like the mini non breads and then there's the big non bread. <laughs> use yeah. the mini ones and make mini yeah. pizzas. 
yes, yes. Much better. <laughs> yeah, that's called a pizzette. When you do a small pizza, you're doing pizzettes. They're they cook quicker. They have yeah. more flavor, and they just yeah. you don't have this big sloppy you know mess no. that for some reason happens when I cook. But yeah. this mushroom thing. So you're doing this wine. Mm. They, it's like a sauce, right? So this is something you'd. They're called steakhouse because this is what you put on steak typically all the time. If you go to a steakhouse, one of the things that they love to do, and of course they do it a la carte, they charge a fortune on the side, are mushrooms. A lot of the times they can be disappointing. So the steak might be a prime dry steak and the side might be, eh, you know, it's okay, a little garlic, a little butter. This is very, very different. You could not eat the steak and still call these steakhouse mushrooms because of the way it tastes like you're putting pieces of steak in your mouth, like mm. you're eating little pieces of steak. So we call it a steakhouse mushroom. You can have it with the steak. You can have it with fish. You can have it with salad, chicken. Oh, good. Um, stay yeah. vegetarian, anything. It just works. I want it in a bowl with mashed potatoes. Like, right, why? Right. And Nancy said, well, I don't know about the mouthfeel, but now what do you think? <laughs> right. The first thing, like we're, we're going right. to talk to Chef Ivan. It's like, okay, yeah. so go with the mouthfeel. Mm. Do we need a crispy thing yeah. in there? There are many stuffed mushrooms I've done in my career where I've stuffed them with mashed potatoes, with a garlic um, mascarpone and Parmesan mashed potatoes, where you cook the mushrooms first, and then you stuff them. The biggest, biggest mistake that people make, they want to do stuffed mushrooms. So what they do is they take a raw, big, like say a big white button, they take the stem out, and they they put the stuffing in, and they put it in the oven, and it comes out like elephant skin. Um, It's dry. It has no texture. You have to cook the mushroom first, and then you stuff, and then you recook. And it's the biggest mistake that people make. And it's just like, oh, I only wish they knew. (laughs) Cook and stuff. Cook and stuff. (laughs) I think mushrooms are kind of like eggs, you know? You got to... You got to be there. You can't like leave them and come back kind of thing. Yes. They go rubbery real fast. Yes. Or they're not yes. really done. And so there's that lim- I call it limbo cooking. <laughs> yeah. And it depends. It depends on the mushroom. Certain mushrooms, like yes. if you're doing trumpets, if you're doing, um, you know, chanterelles or, or different things, they take lighter heat. If you're using a lobster, portobello, cremini, mm. They're going to take high heat. They're going to they're going to take a lot of heat, and you're going to go fast. Um, you know, it, it, I mean, I, I, there's books written on mushrooms. I mean, there's so many different mushrooms and ways to cook them and ways to handle them and store them. And of course, the king daddy of them all is the truffle, which is the underground mushroom, which is the rarest yeah. food, uh, food source in the world. So that's mm-hmm. the king daddy of all your mushrooms. And those are in Europe. So I was going to say the trump, uh, the, the the truffles. I was going to say trumpet mugs, but, um, but the truffles. Those are yeah. really like they're in Italy and, and places like that, right? Russia. The the the, the great truffles, the white Piedmontese albas are in Italy, and then the Perigords are in France. Um, there's summer truffles and different ones in the United States, but the ones in Europe, in those areas, I could sit here and talk to you ten years about truffles and how you taste them outside your head and how aromatic and mystical they are because they're uh they're magical but you have to know how to work with them and you uh, you know a white truffle a white alba truffle wrapped in tissue paper if you unwrap that tissue paper and just leave it in a room from one truffle that room will smell from that tissue paper for almost a week you will smell that truffle still there i mean this is how incredible they are they're like saffron Saffron is like that magical yeah. ingredient too. Yeah. There's just certain ingredients yeah. that are just like, this is the this is the thing, you know, yeah. that um, needs to happen. So, now, okay, so we've got these. You're using the big white button mushrooms, and those are the ones that people get in grocery stores all the yeah. time. And yes. Um, yes. Those are easy and people, to get. listen, don't knock the white button mushrooms because they right. go really well in a lot of things. I use them on pizzas sometimes. Porto, you could get right. the portobello ones like that. Right. Um, right. But I love these mushrooms because they do soak up whatever flavors you're using. Mm-hmm. So right. let's let's start with what we're going to do. These are going to go in the oven, which is interesting, right? Right. You're going to take them and you're going to you can use buttons. You don't need to pay a lot of money. Get some big buttons. And what you want to do is you want to put a little olive oil and you want to toss them. 
you want to make sure when you cook them, you cook them stem side up. So as they're cooking in the oven, the juice stays in that little cup because oh. you're going to save that juice. That mushroom is going to roast for about mm -hmm. 20 minutes, 400 degrees. It's going to start to caramelize. And every one of those mushrooms are going to fill up with juice. So that's what you're going to pour out and add to your sauce as well. Okay. That's called fortifi that's fortifying. You're adding what you started with, not wasting, adding more flavor. You're infusing it now into the sauce. So you, we're going we're gonna to mm. put them in the oven so that you've got 400 degrees. Right. You say we're going to wipe and clean these mushrooms and cut off any wooden stems. So, right. like, okay, let's, let's just start there because the cleaning of the mushrooms, I know we've talked about this before, but, you know, there's the portobellos of taking the gills out, which mm -hmm. we didn't used to do, but now we do. <laughs> and every time I do it, I'm like, Ivan, really, this is such a pain in the butt. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it takes two I know, Nancy's good at it. I'm just like, <laughs> I have to, like, think, and then I'll go, okay, have a glass of wine. No, I'm kidding. But it does, you just, it does work. You just use a spoon. Just take a I, teaspoon and go around. One shot. Yeah. And the gills come out. Yeah. Do. See, yeah. Nancy does it in five seconds. Okay, right. I'll do the spoon. Cause yeah. I, what are you using? A shovel? Don't, don't, <laughs> you, don't you, you should never look at what I'm doing in the kitchen when I'm I cooking. I try not to, seriously. No, because like the other day I almost blew up the house. So. Anyway, no, oh, seriously, there's funny. some dangerous things with that. Ha I need to come to school with you. <laughs> I need to come to school. But um, so cleaning the mushrooms, when it comes to white button mushrooms, I know some people do this brushing thing, and some say don't use water. And, you know, so like I'm no thinking, well, they're growing in poop, right? So now we need to really freak out and put disinfectant yeah. on them. <laughs> we do yeah. need to cook Just... them in wine, clean them off. <laughs> Just wipe them. Just wipe them. You'll be fine. No water. No water. Okay. No water. No. Okay, because then they'll start to bloat up from the water, right? Yes. Yeah, because they have a lot of water in them. You add more water to them. They're a sponge. They take it in, and then they'll mm -hmm. start to release it. And the mushroom won't have a good balance. So you never want to put them in water. Okay. Now, what about cutting off the little brown spots? I mean, I heard this thing about, like, the brown spots actually add more flavor, but there's those little brown yeah. spots. That you're, old you're, you're, brown. No, you know, you'll see a few of them here or there. It's fine. I mean, if you see a lot of them, it means it's old. The mushroom should be firm to the touch. And when you Not snap climbing. the stem, it snaps. The, the stem will snap out. Yep. If it's mushy and the stem kind of is like, you know, soggy and pulling off, the mushrooms are gone. You throw them away. But, yes. but mushrooms, white buttons like that are snappy and fresh and firm. And bright and cheery. <laughs> <laughs> clean, not I know, I'm going to go, we're good and clean and fresh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah. so they have to be snappy. Okay, so you're you're cutting off wood stems, so it's like if it gets all weird at the end part. Like, that's what I normally just cut the end part yeah, off, because I always think yeah, it's going to be... Yeah, just pull them out. Yeah. But sometimes like you don't thing? have to. You can, you can just, no, you can just cut the end and leave yeah. the stem in there as well, because if it's a smaller button, the stems will not taste woody, but when the yeah. mushrooms are old, older meaning, or, or I mean bigger, okay. the stems can be woody. But if they're smaller, don't worry about the stem. Just cut okay. the end. When, when they look like a tree, you take them out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you cut it down. Yeah. Now I suddenly feel like a dentist. But anyway, I don't know why we won't go there. None of us want to go to the dentist. Mm -hmm. But uh, so now you now you've got your mushrooms in a bowl, two pounds, everybody. And now right. you say you're going to take three tablespoons of olive oil and mm -hmm. kind of rub it around and coat them, coat them, and get them yes. all nice. And then yes. you say into the oven, cap side down. Roast them away. Yeah. And for 20, 30 minutes, and then they're deep right. brown. Okay. So I don't think I've ever done that with mushrooms. So that's oh boy! Very wait, well. wait to see what the house smells like. Oh, okay. Tracy makes wow. them all the time, and we always know when they're done. It's like, oh, you smell that? It's like, oh, mm. it's see, I just want to sit with a bowl of these. Like that, but you can put them on salads. That's cool. Because I love. Oh, yeah. I used to fry up mushrooms and portobello mushrooms and put them on salad, yeah. especially when I was vegan. It's endless. That would oh, be it's endless. Yeah. Endless. Mm. Bruschetta, salads, stuffings. I mean, it goes on and on. Mm. I'm hungry now. Okay, we haven't okay. even started the sauce. So while they're cooking, you're, so you get the mushrooms in the oven, and then you start with the sauce. Am, am I getting the yes. timing right? Okay. Yes. 
Okay, so we've got the pot. We've got more olive oil and a garlic puree. So the garlic mm. puree, tell us. Oh, uh, this is the magic. Yeah, this yeah. is the magic. It's like mm. in Goodfellas when they're making the sauce in prison. Ah, you got to have the pork. I love you got to have the beef. You got to have the veal. This is the you got to have. This is magic in cooking. You take equal amounts of garlic and olive oil. You put them in a blender, and on high speed, you blend them to it almost looks like yogurt. Smooth, beautifully white. You put that in a squirt bottle. You put it in a ramekin. And the beauty of this is when you add it to a dish, you add it to a saute pan, it cooks out very quickly and blends with all the ingredients. So it's done quickly and it infuses that oil and that garlic through everything. It makes the house smell incredible. It's easy. I, I was taught this years ago. I never forgot it. Um, it works. It works. Okay. We're gonna if you this. add like a vinegar, like a champagne vinaigrette, Yes. in there or like lemon would yes. that and yes. some black pepper do we have a yes. salad dressing <gasps> um you could it's a base of everything you could just keep building on it but that's a main foundation yes a lot of people okay. they'll put garlic in it's undercooked oh you bite raw garlic it's overcooked it's burnt this is a flow this is a mm. quick flow a quick saute and you're watching it you're smelling it you're seeing it the garlic talks back to you I'm of course, you have to talk to the garlic. <laughs> I'm putting it in a cheese omelet. I knew she was going to yeah. put She has a thing about omelets. Now, what about um, toast? Would you just like go squeeze, squeeze on the toast and put Parmesan cheese or no? you got to have the butter. Would that, yeah. It, 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 by the way, so if you wanted to put this on toast, what I would do is I would take roasted garlic that you've already roasted Add olive oil to that and blend it, and then you have a roasted garlic spread that's already cooked. Mm. Or you put it on toast and then put the toast in the pan and let the garlic and the Parmesan cook as you put the toast inside down. So there's a lot of ways that you can do this. This mm. is like a new breakfast dish. We need new breakfast yes. dishes. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. And then you could put like a nice egg on top with a little yeah. bit of red oh. yeah. Oh like yeah. Seriously? Cheese. Seriously. Mm. And now it's okay. like a it's like a new egg <laughs> I know. Like I'm well my latest thing has been taking tomatoes and just cooking Nancy's put some slices them up and, and use them as, you know, part of the omelet. We've been using them yeah. what did, I don't the other night and I, I did it in pizza, just like did the yeah. sauteed them with the um mushrooms. And put that as a pizza with like some oregano and oh my god when you just start using really fresh ingredients it's yeah. pure and it's cheaper by the way <laughs> it yes. is. and you know what's in there there's no sugar there's no salt you know what's right going you in. control you control everything you also mm -hmm. control the food you make food do anything you want it to do you make food as healthy as you want or as unhealthy as you want Unfortunately, mm -hmm. nowadays in most restaurants, a lot of restaurant food is not healthy. It's covered yeah. with a lot of salt. It's covered with a lot of fat. Um, you don't have to do any of that. You can just control it. It's quick. You build confidence. And once you get technique, the world is your oyster. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So this is, you've taught us two things here now. We're getting into the mushrooms. Now we're learning things about pureeing, the garlic puree. Right. But now right. we're going to get into the wine part. Um, right. And I know that one of the ingredients is sweet chili. And I, I mm -hmm. have a quick question about spice mm -hmm. because I just learned that curry, you get curry powder, and mm -hmm. it's not like it, it's got a blend of things. Like there's other things in it, nutmeg and all these mm -hmm. other things that's in the curry mm -hmm. powder. Can like yes. can we, can't we make our own like yes. that doesn't? We can do that. Like, and I'm one, yeah. wondering, like, when you do sweet chili, is that a, a is that a derivative? Like, is it a straight chili that they've, you know, said this is? No, I I use what's called Mayploy sweet chili. So there's a little Asian infusion in this as well. It's sold in the supermarket, and it's basically a sauce that's slightly sweet, and it's really it's not spicy at all, but it has just enough of a light light sweetness and a viscosity that 
works with the olive oil and the butter in this and kind of brings the dish together. But you can do a lot of different things. You can put curries in, you can put raw masala in, you can put coriander, you can do your own spice mixtures. That's up to you. That's totally up to the person making it. Okay. That's what's so cool. I know. Just change out the spice, got a whole new dish. I know. I want to, I want to, I want to do my own spicy things. I want to make my own mixes. That's like my new thing. That's, you know, that's what I loved when we were living in Kenya and you go to the, the city market. The spices were all like just out there like little pyramids and fresh and it just was like the spice walking through the city market and mm. getting your spices that didn't come in tins or bars. Oh, plastic. Yeah, it just, it, here's your bag of spices. It was so cool. And chilies. Like Spices. they would take dried chilies. I know they do that in yeah, Mexico you, too. And, and then they'd make their yeah. own powder from the dried chili. Exactly. Right. And right. so it's fresh and fresh. And then you, then you could play with it. And boy, I, I have to say, it's so much stronger right. than, what, yeah. than, than what you can buy. Oh, yeah. They're it, fresh. It was, yeah. wow. Yeah. yeah. It was fun, man. And that's the difference, right? When you're going to cook, if you wanted to do make your own sweet chili or something, you have to look at where, like, are you getting the dried or the or the fresh, right? Because there's going right. to be a difference sure. in how things come out. Like, yeah. Sure. In yeah, something, something's dehydrated, you're bringing it back. Something's already fresh, you're cooking it down. You know, it all depends. It all depends what you're doing, how much time you have, what kind of flavor profiles you're looking for. Mm, man. Okay, we're going back to the recipe. I'm trying to keep on track, but, you know, not good <laughs> at that ever. Um, but, no, but this is how we learn all these different techniques and why they're important. So now you've got your garlic puree. So now that's what you start, you know, for the sauce. This is the beginning, the olive oil and the puree you put in the pan over a medium, yeah. high heat, right? We'll talk right. About that. Yeah, and it's going to go quickly, and you're going to start to see the garlic kind of get a little color, and you're going to mix it into that olive oil, and it's going to start to infuse together. Mm. And then, then you're going to throw you, the mushrooms in, mm. and you're going to go about another three minutes. You're going to saute. You're going to move them around, um, and as you're doing that, some of that garlic is going to build what's called a fond, F-O-N-D, and that's the bottom in French. So you're oh. not going to burn it, but it's going to start to get a little brown, and it's going to leave little caramelized, little caramelized bits on the bottom. It's going to, you know, as when you saute mm -hmm. in a pan, it starts to, you know, build on the bottom mm -hmm. of the pan. Yeah. Now you want it to glaze, and that's when you want to add your wine, and then you want to reduce it by half, so it starts to reduce by half, and you're coming down to almost like a syrup. Wow. Um, wow. Now the so water then, leaves the wine. All the water cooks out of the wine, so now you're Zinfandel times 10. Now it's like really tasting the Zinfandel. Ooh. And the alcohol goes out the window too, which is well, yeah. out so the kids window. Can eat this. Oh, so families can eat this. Oh, yeah. yeah, because as yeah. soon as you heat alcohol, it goes bye-bye. Uh, and so when you're doing this, you're saying like you're deglazing the pan. And so that yes. means that that means you're taking the water out or deglazing means you're like Smearing it around the pan, or not smearing it. <laughs> the glazing <laughs> means you're gonna you're gonna take the bottom parts up. That's how you get it off the bottom. So you deglaze, you hit it with a little bit of a wooden spoon or whatever, and now all those bits now have been oh, okay. released into your pan, and then you reduce down to the syrup. Taste. Yeah. Oh. Now when you get syrupy, that's when you add your butter and sweet chili. You cook for two minutes, and then you then you salt and pepper. Yes. See, I didn't. Okay, no, I could, wow. So I that's kind the end. Of, I kind of like the salt thing. I kind of feel like um, should be at the end. it should always be at the end. And it, it, I think it cooks out, and you end up adding more salt, and but you don't taste it. Yeah, like when I make chili, I yeah. I always go like I don't know what I'm doing with like I I just kind of go on like a feel on spice, which is it's it's gone to a normal. We've we've been okay. But the salt thing to me is always weird because I feel like if you screw up the salt, it's gonna it can just ruin. You can screw up on well, putting too much curry right. or cumin or chili, but you screwing up on salt sucks. It, you can't take it. Well, here here's the deal: if you added the salt in the beginning, 
and then you added the wine, you're reducing the wine, you're also reducing the salt. You're making yeah. it saltier. It's mm -hmm. like putting soy sauce into something, mm -hmm. reducing it down, and now, holy cow, why is yeah. this so salty? And this is where yeah. a lot of people make those mistakes. Mm -hmm. Seasoning is a finesse. Seasoning mm -hmm. is at the end. And then, of course, you taste it. And if it needs a pinch more, you give it a pinch more. Hopefully, it does. if it has too much salt, you're done. <laughs> you, you, you didn't make it right. There's so, nothing you can do about that. Okay, so and then at the end, I just want to go back to the salting thing and the seasoning, but to keep on track, I want to say, so now once you've got this sauce and it's you've salt and peppered, you say now you're going to put, you're going to put panko, you're going to take the pan away from the heat and you're going to put panko on the mushrooms. So yes, gives that I, forgot, I forgot one thing though. Uh oh. The, ju the juice that you poured out of your little mushroom caps? Oh, yeah. You've added as well with the butter and oh. the sweet chili. Okay. Cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's because then you get the mushroom vibe. And then, okay, so now the panko goes over it, and then this is ready, and you put it back into the broiler. Wow. You put panko breadcrumbs on top, you sprinkle them, and then you go into the broiler. And then when it comes out, you put a sprinkle, a little fresh thyme. I like to do a squeeze of lemon at that point, and you are fine. You are ready. So what you do is you eat them with a small demi tasse fork. You know the little tiny forks? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because if you eat them with a big fork, you're going to spear four of them at one time. And these little suckers, you have to mm. eat one at a time. It's like an M&M, &M, a peanut M&M. &M. You can't put four in your mouth. you got to do one at a time. This is like a little juice berry, man. Mm -hmm. And and so yes. the panko, okay, I want to go back to the salt thing. I have, it's salt and slow cookers. I want to talk about that. But yes. the panko yes. thing, okay. Uh -huh. So we didn't have panko, and then Nancy decided to get bread crumbs and then try to yes, make yeah. our bread crumbs. Okay, mm -hmm. so what is the... What, 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 what panko is is a toasted Japanese bread crumb. They come pre-toasted. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all it is. That's what panko so, is. It's a pre-toasted breadcrumb. How do we make our own? Does it matter what kind of bread you bring no, to toast? No, you, you it? It. Yes, that's what happens. Yes, I'm just exactly. <laughs> you, cut, you cut it into cubes, you put it in the oven, you let it get toasted, and you put it in a robocoup. If you yes. want to put regular breadcrumbs on this, it's fine. It's mm -hmm. still going to gratiné under the broiler. You're still going to be fine. Panko just gives it a little different mouthfeel, a little yeah, more crunch. It's kind of like it's now, getting like wonder flour versus flour flour. Yes, that's a very good point. Or you make your own breadcrumbs, you put them on a pan with some parchment paper, and put them in an oven for five minutes and let them get brown, and yeah. you've got toasted breadcrumbs. Yeah. Oh, you can do a lot with toasted breadcrumbs. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's just everything a little oh, yes. crunchy. I used, I used to make my own croutons. Yeah, me too. Because you couldn't get them in Africa, and it was fun. I, I learned how to make croutons when I worked in a deli. Yeah. We'd make our own croutons. We'd take whatever the bread didn't sell that day. Yeah. And right. you just had to chop it up, put mm. some, like, oil and, and, and seasoning and, and put them right. in there. And yeah. it right. was good. Now, this, it, this dish is umami. There's a lot of umami in this dish. Mushrooms are umami. If you want to sprinkle also a little Parmesan on this, this is mm. umami. Yeah. Now think about the crunch and the crunchy breadcrumb and the Parmesan, and then the sweet mouthfeel mm. and the delicate part of the mushroom, and then that Zinfandel and butter kind of kick in with the garlic. So it's you make it, it tastes good. The next day it tastes mm. better. It keeps getting better. Tracy just did marinated mushrooms a few days ago. Mm -hmm. Every day they changed. Every mm -hmm. day they got better. But you know yeah. what she did before she marinated them? She roasted them in the oven or she sauteed them. She cooked them first before she marinated. Mm -hmm. it, you know, then I feel like you could take them and you could make a French onion mushroom soup. Why not? Sure. Yeah. Oh, French onion soup. Absolutely. Is, is, that mm -hmm. is like, that is. That is like luxury in a spoon, especially yeah. if the provolone mm -hmm. cheese. Oh, Ooh. my God. The provolone cheese. I know. Mm. Wouldn't that be cool with mushrooms in it, too? Yeah. I don't think mm. so. little flavor. Can we, make, can we make French <laughs> onion soup with vegetable broth instead of beef broth, or is that going to? We just had this conversation. The French onion soup. Oh, yeah. We just talked about this the other night. Yes. 
Wow. Yes, you don't need to do veal stock. You can do a vegetable stock and yeah. do a completely vegetarian um, yes. soup. Because it's the caramelization Absolutely. of yes. the onions, really, yes. that we're yes. after. Yes, yes, yes. And add mushrooms to it. Do mushrooms and, uh, yeah. you know. Okay, so I want to go to the, the slow cooker thing because, like, that's how, like, and I think especially in the fall season and, and you know, busy parents and busy people, a slow cooker to me is like a godsend. Now, yeah. I know a lot of people do their slow cooking on the stove. If I did that, we wouldn't have a house. So <laughs> I'm just saying to me, this is there's like a little safety feature to it. Um, you know, because I didn't go to Nana's cooking class of blowing up the pressure cooker, but it's, we have the same genes. But so what what I learned was over the years now, and we were talking about this on another show, is like I would caramelize things when I made chili with, with meat. I'd caramelize it on the stove first and put it in a slow cooker. But now I've learned that your slow cooker almost has like different cooking zones and the bottom to, to like take your onions and your garlic and cook them first, just like you taught me to cook the mushrooms before you put them on the pizza like just do that little liked part so it got everything moving for your pizza well then that now now what my question is is about the seasoning should i wait on the salt because i would like almost prefer yes. to because if you're putting like chili mm -hmm. or you're making a soup yes. yeah like it's going to take away from the flavors of the onion and the garlic which is that that's my thing man like what which where, spice is it in the beginning Okay. And do your salt and pepper less. Put your spices in the beginning, let that all work, and then mm. you always want to taste something before you salt and pepper it. You might find that with the spices that you put in there, it may not even need salt. So salt exactly. is like, okay, I'm going to add salt. Guess what? I don't need yep. to. Salt and pepper at the end. I was just it's talking to the kids. Tomato. If you ever walk into a restaurant and there's no salt and pepper shakers on the table, walk out. Because the chef is thinking, it's so perfect, you don't need to season it. Seasoning with salt and pepper is an individual thing. Some yeah, people like it more salty. Some people like it less. You always give them the option. Okay. So we can put our spices in. We can do all that. Because the mm -hmm. spices, oh, yeah. sometimes, especially if it's tomato-based, all of a sudden it becomes salty, just what I've noticed yeah. from the tomato, right? Yeah. So yeah. the same thing with wine. Now let's go to the French onion soup. I'm 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 gonna do this now. I'm gonna make a French onion soup. That's my next with thing. With the mushrooms in it. I'm gonna do the whole thing. But now, I won't salt, okay? But can I add Zinfandel to the French onion soup? Yeah. I just feel sure. like we need red wine in there. Like why I have not? To the, a recipe why not? for it. Yeah. Why not? Of course you can. It needs it. It'll be awesome. It'll give that yeah. color of it being the beef, right? Sure. Deep, we'll carry that deep rouge color. Yeah, it would be beautiful. Absolutely. Which means and you can blends. take what your recipe here and incorporate mm -hmm. this into a French yeah. onion soup. Exactly. Ab absolutely. Sure you can. Cooking wow. cooking intertwines with everything. And One leads to two, three leads to ten. Ribs. Absolutely. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some good, yeah. you know, nice with a oh, nice crusty. Mm. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Can't take it. <laughs> I know. It. I'm hungry now. I know. Dude. I'm all worked up now. I'm, hey, I'm worked no. up. You know, it's we're in a heat wave heat. down. Yeah, we're in a heat wave. We don't have air conditioning. There's no air conditioning here. So holy yeah, cow. Diego, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. That's well, right. Uh, I'm gonna send you some cold margaritas. Oh. Right. <laughs> well, being in Tucson, if you don't have air conditioning, you're gonna you're die. Dead. You're gonna melt <laughs> yeah. into a little, you know, witch puddle. I do want to ask you, um, when it comes down to, because we're doing this global, you know, food feature. I'm sorry, how, I didn't hear you. That we're doing this whole global food feature. How yeah. does, I mean, isn't every recipe have another country in it? I mean, how can yes. one recipe not be something from somebody else? At the it, end of it the day, can. It, it can. And, and if you're a chef and you want to keep progressing, you want to look globally, you know, what are you going to do? It's like, I look at a recipe, you know, and say, okay, oh, wait a second. I can add this. Oh, wait a second. I just learned about this spice. I can add that. That's what makes it incredible. It's global cuisine. I have been using French technique, Italian technique, crossing it with Latin, Southern Mediterranean, mm -hmm. Argentine, Spanish, Israeli, Asian. I mean, but you have to make it work. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to put soy sauce on peanut butter crackers and go, 
I've arrived. You've got to, yeah. you've got to think umami. You got to think globally, but you got to think about it's such a calling. How good can I make it taste to the person I'm cooking it for? And you know what? It's maddening. It can make you maddening. Tracy had to get me right a number of years ago because I was so insane. It's got to do with even a fingerprint on a plate, you know? Mm-hmm. And it was like, and she said to me, you ready? What she yeah. said to me was, you're not cooking for starving people. In other words, you know, I mean, if the dish is five minutes late to the table because you got to make it right, the world is not going to end. But having been brought up in French training, you, you know how that is. It's, 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 mm-hmm. it's insanity. Yeah. Well, from our travels, it's about there's always the great weight. And it's about having that conversation amongst people while something's cooking. Or if you're in the house and people are cooking, it's a conversation. There's music. There's often cocktails, and sometimes the food is going on outside and on the inside, actually very much yes. in South Africa. Mm-hmm. There's poiki yep. cost, there's a braai going on, there's that outside. There's the ladies often doing the kitchen, like the salads, and you know the guys go out, and this is just a mm-hmm. typical scenario, not saying that it's, it's probably changed up since we've been there, but it would be everybody has their roles, and when you go in, the sauces came from the women. They knew, and the men would know. They would like, they're marinating the meat. They would get into that. And so if you're going to have a gathering, people started a few days before the event on how to marinate. Some of the meat was marinated for a couple of days. Mm-hmm. Some people right. dried the meat into a druivors, which is uh, like jerky, but it's sausage jerky, I, I would say. Right. And so you have all these different things people would do, and you'd get together all ages, uh, everything would happen, and it was about that. It was about taking the time. Everything mm-hmm. about food was taking it the was, time. Yeah, and, and now we've become this fast food. That's in this culture. Oh, it's insane. This it's, is, yeah. I, the difference I, listen, in other countries with the wait time I, was where yeah. we socialized. Yeah. Right. right, right. I am convinced, I am totally convinced, This country, many, many, many years ago, has given up on the concern as far as health for its population. Mm -hmm. We are the fattest, sickest Mm -hmm. nation on the planet. It's all about fast. And if people are are cooking, they're not going to the perimeter. They're going to the center. Something I can put in a microwave. Something, And this is what we teach the kids. So it's 20 grams of protein. And then how many grams of fat? How many Mm -hmm. grams of salt? You know, I mean, it's just, it's so ridiculous. And then portions. Oh, it's got 480 milligrams of salt. Not too bad. Well, it's four servings to a package. And it's Mm -hmm. sad. And it's what's making us sick. Mm -hmm. And it's what's making food (laughs) companies rich. Because as you know, America is one of the greatest nations in the world for putting out junk food. I mean, we just put it out. We're, We're supposed to eat on the run. We're not right. supposed to sit down at the table, have a conversation, right. and and let you don't even have time to smell the food. No. Like you know what I mean? It's like put it down, rush, get out, turn yeah. over, yeah, you know, move it on, move it on, move it on. And I'm just saying, where's the? What is what, what what is the big big rush? If you go into the communities that are. American, but have have just recently come over from yeah. different countries. You'll see them eating slow, mm-hmm. like the slow food. We have yeah. slow food. We have slow travel as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's like everybody just slow down on everything, and a, and a on everything. You can think, but they're they're cooking. They eat, you know, it's like I want, when you travel to an, a city, go to the different neighborhoods. Go to, mm-hmm. like you guys are in San Diego and Car- and Carlsbad. Um, Ophi Biscato, uh, yeah. she she has um, a taqueria, and it's, um, I'm going to say it's on Strand Street, but it's not, it's, anyway, she is in, there's this little barrio district, and she taught me what a barrio was, because right. we just got to mm-hmm. this country, We I didn't know what we were doing, and she created a museum, a family history museum for her barrio district, across from her cafe, which I called a cafe, because it was always a corner stop, shop mm-hmm. to me, it was a cafe, but you go in, they're making fresh tacos. I remember going back in there uh, and learning how did all this happen, and I didn't understand. And then right, we went to Mexico, right. moved there after that. I was like, oh man, Ophi, I got, I we got to talk. And <laughs> you sit down, 
and you'd watch everybody mm. come in. Kids, kids would come in for their parents. And there's this Mm. lineage, and it was just like, in San Francisco, it's kind of like that. You have these different neighborhoods, cultural neighborhoods, you know, um, where if you go outside the strip, (laughs) you know, and Main Streets are great. Main Streets, I I believe, big, you know, know, we have to have our Main Streets as mom and pop shops and restaurants. But go into the cultural districts, I'm going to say. I Mm. I don't know how to say this book correct, but go – Go into, you know, Chinatown, Koreatown, go into, you know, where where the Mexican community is, the African, different Jamaican community, you're going to find food. It may not be a Lottie Dar restaurant, but damn it, you're going to have food that is fresher and better. And then going to be yummy. Then, and it can be faster than your fast food. And that's what everybody it, knew about Opie. Yeah. Go to Opie. And, you know, yeah. It's and it's America. It's what, it's truly what America is, is yeah, that mm-hmm. kind of experience. The biggest lie ever put out on the American people, you want to know what it is? That made them billions and billions of dollars? Lather, rinse, and repeat when you shampoo. <laughs> you never have to shampoo your hair a second time. But you know what? You buy more shampoo. If everybody just used a little less of something, we'd have surpluses. We'd probably be better in better shape. When people are eating, and I'm guilty of this. Tracy had a really good army for this. You know how fast people eat? We do mm-hmm. Thanksgiving meals here in 20 minutes. I know. I know. Nancy They're at the pumpkin pie minutes, yeah. in 20 minutes. But, yeah, but 20 minutes. Really They're having pie. What's the rush? But then restaurants Because we're want nervous wrecks. We're okay, nervous wrecks. restaurants want the turnout of yes. get in and get out. There's yes. that, you know, we need the next head in the table. You know, yes. it's like how many heads, boop, you know, that's what we are in the restaurant world. And, right. you know, I'd like to see restaurants get, I would rather pay a little bit more and have right. a, a relaxing experience. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, of course. I like these restaurants now that are going into that, everybody sits at a communal table, family style. You don't know who's right. going to be sitting next to you. And- oh, oh, that I would not like. That I would not, see, that I would not like. The communal table. See, now he's like, oh, no, she, I'm not doing that. You don't- she's shaking her head. Oh, no, no, oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to talk to anyone. I just want to be with Chase. I don't, well, our friend. Oh, I don't, I don't want, it's like a bed and breakfast. You go to a bed and breakfast, you wake up, they're all sitting in the dining room. Give me a break. I'm going to IHOP. <laughs> Nancy got or, in an argument with cruise ships. Bed and no, no. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. I love, I totally I love the concept you. of bed and breakfast, and we support a lot of them. Oh, them, but God I mean, bless Nancy, you. We don't travel that way because Nancy and I, no matter what, at the end of the day, I don't care what we do. At the end of the day, we want our little patio time with our little wine, you know. So yes, yeah, I hear you. What. But breakfast yeah. time, like the bed and breakfast, I remember it was one of our first bed and breakfast experiences in this country, and I'm not going to say who, what, and where. That was but shocked. it was in Southern California, <laughs> and it was in the mountains. It was not Julian, everybody, uh, just so you know, because everybody knows we you know, lived in Julian. This is, this is way, way <laughs> far from and there. far from there, but we go to this bed and breakfast, and so like we're staying in this person's house, basically. And next thing you know, we're in two rooms, and I felt like a little kid. Like, I felt very close. And Nancy's across the hall. But everybody's using the same bathroom. Now, I understand we've done that in Europe. We've done it in different places. But Nancy's like, I mean, we've been in rooms where the bathroom, the toilet is in the same room as our bedroom. So, like, in the middle of the night, I could go, hi, Nancy, I see you on the toilet, you know. But anyway, I know. We always go to the toilet, right? It's always, I had to, you know, take care of that. But yeah. we go that next morning, we go to breakfast and, you know, oh boy. and it's like, this is before your coffee. So your morning coffee sometimes starts with that. That's like, ah, but I remember we're all <laughs> sitting at this table and somebody brought out this fresh yeah, grapefruit and everything. And it ca- actually came from an area that we're very close to. And, and we know where the grapefruit was grown. And this woman just turns around in front of everyone. This grapefruit is crap. And she goes off and like, how that, 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 that. And even her husband's nudging her like, you need to shut now. And we're like yeah. trying to defend the grapefruit. We're like, yeah. everybody else is like, we like the grapefruit. You don't. And it was this weird thing where we're bizarre. all at the table. And I, I fortunately have not had any more experiences like this in bed and breakfast because we do go to oh, the yeah. But uh, this was... I, 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 Oh yeah, I I I hear you. I years ago I went and some couple was talking to me. She 
about her bunions and and this this and that. And quite honestly, you know, I was looking at some of the, the bed and breakfast donors. I mean, they looked a little bit like serial killers. You know, I was expecting there <laughs> there were bodies buried under the front porch. There was something just not right. You know, it was just it, it was just it's a little it was, it was a little weird. It was a little weird. It's the shining. So, it's yeah, the shining. They're I'm gonna done. come up. Yee, yee, yee. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's funny. Oh it's my like gosh. Let's all have breakfast Let's... in the clubhouse. I know. <laughs> Thank <Yeah>. you. <laughs> uh. Breakfast. Breakfast is a quiet thing. Don't talk to me before. Coffee. Yeah. I'm not yes. nice, you know, or I'm going to yes. give you some weird trippy thing that's going on in my head because I kind of meditated yeah. that time. And it's like, you don't want to know what's in my head at that time. <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah. not um, processed and it will not come out. Yeah. You have to be yeah. able to think before you speak. And in the morning yes. before coffee, yeah. no one's thinking before they speak. It's just not. No, happening. no. I'm it's, just saying. No. That was, you, we've been to a lot of bed and breakfast and you usually have your own um, table. This That's one, nice. this I like one that. had a yeah. This That's one, fine. everybody was sitting at the same table, and it was way too close. Like if one person got up, everybody had to move, like a it theater was like boarding kind school. of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was so close that it you it was like I don't really want to know this person sitting yeah right across yeah. from me and yeah I can no, see your nose hair no it, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be alone with your food. You just want to be alone with your food. He's, he's like, I want the experience. No one's going to interrupt my food experience, and yeah. that is that. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been always fun having you on the show. Oh, and, you're uh, welcome. Thank you. Always good. Everybody, again, uh, you can keep up with Chef Ivan at Flowers. Go to at Chef Ivan Flowers on Twitter and Facebook. He's also on YouTube. Just go type in Chef Ivan Flowers. You will find him there. And also his recipe of for these delicious mushrooms that we have to make like now, the no, no, Steakhouse no. mushrooms. Um, other than the only fact is like we're going to have to like give up some of our wine, but I can take a sip before I can give it to the pot. I can do that. We can share yes. it. It's not all yes, the, you bottom, are. the whole pot. It will be no. fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> Absolutely fine. We can do that. It's, we can be nice. It's going to be worth yeah. it. It can be worth it. Uh, it anyway, yeah. his recipe is up on blendradioandtv.com now. Just go type in Chef Ivan. You'll find all his recipes as well. And uh, it'll be in the September-October issue of Big Blend Radio and TV magazine. And we want to thank all of our listeners for joining us. Thank you for joining us today. Big Blend Radio airs Sunday through Friday. <laughs> you can listen to us live on Blog Talk Radio, or you can listen anytime on demand through all the different outlets like iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, all those places. Um, just go to bigblendradio.com for the schedule and those links. And uh, we've got some music for you, Chef Ivan. This okay. one. Oh, Sam Giannis is cool. He's up in uh, Milwaukee. And uh, this is a song called Recipe. And, you know, we, this is Eat, Drink, Be Merry. Be Merry, his, his whole song is about having the recipe to enjoy life. And um, he talks nice. about food in there a little bit. Uh, it is off of his brand new album called Return of the Goya. Part one, this is wonderful guitar of his. And everyone, you can go to samyanis.com to learn more. Sam and then uh, L L A N A S. So again, here it is recipe. Thanks so much, Ivan. Thanks, Ivan. Take care. Thanks, guys. Enjoy, everyone. Here it is recipe. All right. Oh, when the sun comes up and there's something in your cup, a recipe.
the rest.